We now continue with more of The Mark Milton Show with The Smash on 590 The Fan and 590TheFan.com. All right, you're listening to The Mark Milton Show. Normally with The Smash, he's out today. We're wishing him the best uh, and a speedy recovery. Um, we do have, uh, for very fortunate today to have with us um, virtually uh, in the Miller Furniture Studios, our guest, the Honorable Matthew T. Shelp, uh, United States District Court Judge for the Eastern District of Missouri. Judge Shelp, welcome to the program. Thanks, Mark. Yeah, well, we appreciate you being with us. Obviously, uh, you you were my former boss um, at, uh, at the law firm I worked at previously and a mentor of mine. So uh, looking forward to having you on and uh, hopefully our listeners uh, can get to know you a little bit better, uh, you know, as, as a federal judge here in the Eastern District. So tell us, um, for people who don't understand kind of the role of a federal district court judge, um, what is your, what is your day-to-day, uh, you know, life look like as a, as a federal district court judge? Well, um, I'm one of, uh, a number of judges that are assigned uh, to the district court in the Eastern district of Missouri. So basically if you draw a line from North to South, uh, we're in charge of the Eastern half of the state, and we preside over, or I preside over cases of criminal cases, federal criminal cases that allege violations of federal criminal law, and over uh, uh, a number of civil cases uh, that come before this court. Uh, We are a court of limited jurisdiction, but that means that we get select cases uh, based on the diversity of citizenship or whether a federal question is asked, and a variety of other cases. So I preside over somewhere between uh, 280 to 320, 330 cases at any given time. And uh, I think one person described my job as sort of being an air traffic controller. I think that's accurate. Mm -hmm. And we spend our time trying to um, guide these cases and these disputes into uh, a state of resolution, whether that be a settlement or a trial. And... um, that's what I do every day. Awesome. Well, and and you you are in the Eastern District of Missouri now. You actually hail from the western side of the state, and I apologize for not congratulating you on the Kansas City Chiefs AFC Championship victory. So congrats, congrats on that. I'm sure you're excited about them being back in the Super Bowl. Totally pumped, as you know. But uh, I think you know I've noticed that the Chiefs have pretty much caught on across the whole state. So I think it's fair to call them Missouri's team at this point. Would you agree, Mark? There you go. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Um, and, and talk about your your background. You know, your upbringing. Uh, like I said, you're from Lee Summit, Missouri, correct? That's correct. And you were a, a you were a, a uh, high school standout three sport athlete. Is that is that correct? <laughs> I don't know about standout, but I did play sports in high school. I was uh, a, uh, I guess the highlight would have been an appearance in the 1988 state championship game. Uh, that was uh, the play-by-play man Kevin Slayton on that broadcast in 1988. Uh, but like many basketball, teams, is that basketball? Basketball, wow. Correct. And like many teams in the state of Missouri. Suffered a loss to the Vashon uh, Wolverines. So there you go. Well, I've seen your baseball swing. It's kind of a J- Jeff Bagwell s stance. Would you would you say that's fair? Is that how you when you played baseball back in the day? I think it's you know <laughs> kind of a right handed power hitter with limited fielding ability. So yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. Perfect for a DH. Perfect for a DH. There's no question about it. There you go. So you go you go go to high school at Lee Summit. You end up at Mizzou for undergrad. Is that right? That's right. And what did you what did you study in undergrad? I, I, I studied. Uh, I was in the business school. Okay. Graduated actually with two degrees, one in logistics and one in marketing. Wow. And then, did you know you always wanted to be a lawyer? Um, you know, I had an uncle that hails from Lexington, Missouri. Sure. Uh, he was home uh, of Senator Josh Hawley. Home of Senator Josh Hawley. That's correct. Uh, my uncle was a Navy pilot, uh, kind of a larger than life figure. Uh, he's now deceased, but uh, he, uh, after he got out of the Navy, went to law school, and I was always, you know, talking to him. He encouraged me to to do that, and so I don't know if uh, I had like a definite set plan to do it, but it was always something um, that, at least in the back of my my mind, was an option. And so you went on to go to law school at Mizzou, correct? Correct. How did you decide on on sticking around Columbia for law school? 
Well, um, you know, I applied to a number of law schools, but ultimately um, in talking to um, a variety of people, you know, my goal was always to be an attorney in the state of Missouri. So um, I don't think there's a place that makes more sense if you know that's what you want to do than going to the University of Missouri. Absolutely. And that's how I felt about St. Louis University when I, you know, my alma mater was, I was always told if you want to practice in St. Louis, there's really no better school to go to than, than SLU Law. Um, so you go to law school and you end up uh, joining the Navy JAG, right? As an as an attorney, That's Lieutenant correct. Lieutenant Dan Caffey style. If you're familiar with a few good men, is that is that a fair characterization of uh, of the JAG? Oh, absolutely. I was better looking than Tom Cruise, <laughs> and you know, definitely had better cross examinations. But uh, uh, no, not really. Of course not. But the JAG was still very fun. It was a great way to start. Um, my career, I've had the opportunity to uh, help a number of young attorneys over the years get into the JAG Corps. And I think it's, you know, like I said, a great place to start your career, kind of a combination of maybe working in a uh, prosecutor's office, also, you know, working at a defense firm or a public defender's office and doing a little bit of civil law. So it's, it's all, uh, it's a, it's a great experience. And, uh, you know, a great place to, you know, start your career. And certainly if you enjoy it, a great place to have a really rewarding career if you stay in for the long term. Now with that, do you have to go through basic training? Because I don't think that's something I could handle. Um, <laughs> and so is that, is that part of the curriculum as a uh, aspiring well, JAG attorney? Well, my brother-in-law is a Navy pilot. Okay. And he went to officer candidate school, which was like uh, 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 the Richard Gear movie, you know, where he's, <laughs> getting running around uh, and getting um, having to go through some sort of hazing and stuff like that. Uh, he reminds me every day that really the basic training, quote unquote, that I had to go through was knife and fork school. So I went with the doctors and the nurses <laughs> the, and, and the lawyers, and we basically showed us how to put a uniform on and not be complete idiots when we get into the military. Uh, that's great. So how long did you serve uh, in the JAG? Four years. Okay. And then what, what did you do after that? Well, uh, I, got, I was able to uh, get a job at a local law firm here in St. Louis, Thompson Coburn, and uh, uh, went from Groton, Connecticut, where I was stationed, back to St. Louis. You know, again, I had always been targeted, targeting moving back to uh, Missouri to practice. My wife was eight months pregnant, so uh, when I got the job offer, I wasn't too picky. No, it was a great job offer. And <laughs> With the great Joe Orlett? <laughs> that Joe Orlett was one of the people that hired me, absolutely. Excellent. Excellent. So you went there and we're doing more uh, litigation. Is that right? That's right. But, you know, just kind of basic, your basic civil litigation associate did a variety of things, kind of uh, started to hone my interest in what became my main uh, area of private practice, white collar, uh, you know, litigation. And, you know, it's kind of that area that we work together in, Mark. Gotcha. Yeah. So um, let's talk about that. The, the kind of the, I mean, the big part of your white collar experience it was the result of you working at the u.s attorney's office um what led you to go there and talk about some of the some of the work you did while you were a, a federal prosecutor yeah i you know had an opportunity when uh president bush number two was elected uh, unfortunately after 9 11 they uh there was an opportunity to they wanted to bulk up the u.s attorney's offices and so i don't know at the time the st louis U.S. Attorney's Office, the Eastern District of Missouri office was very stable. They had very few hires, incredibly difficult to get into. Um, but because of 9-11, they had 11 um, positions. And so I was lucky enough to have the opportunity to take one of those positions, and I moved into a white-collar prosecutor role, for economic crimes, focused on all sorts of uh, interesting things, but and also a lot of health care uh, criminal prosecution. Did you handle many tax cases as a, as a prosecutor? I handled, you know, a few tax cases, as you know, Mark, uh, those cases are often sort of, um, come down from Washington DC and are kind of more or less assigned to the U S attorney's office. So, uh, I did a few, but I would, you know, um, not call myself an expert in tax law like yourself, sir. <laughs> oh, that's too kind. Well, Jim Crow, the legend, uh, legendary uh, former criminal chief, he was a former tax division guy. I know he liked to uh, to get involved with any tax cases that uh, that came through that office. So he probably Absolutely. he probably snatched them up as they came through. Um, so you go from 
you know, and this is what I find fascinating about you as a federal judge and which, which I think makes you a, a tremendous federal judge is because you've seen things from almost every angle because you've, you've been on the prosecutor side and you've also been on the defense side, which is, you know, when, when I worked with you, we were, um, you know, representing clients. And so you ended up going into private practice, spent some time, uh, you know, representing people, um, you know, through investigations and things like that. Um, what, t t tell us a little bit about that experience. What, what prompted you to, you know, go out on, go out on the, the civil, excuse me, go out on the, uh, I guess defendant side or the private side and, and start your own firm. Yeah. Well, uh, you know, I, I think you've had a, him as a guest of your show, Jeff Jensen, Correct. Uh, for, yes. former friend of the US show. Attorney. We call him friends of the show. He's a friend of the show. <laughs> uh, he and I worked together as assistant prosecutors and, um, you know, we started as we sort of evolved and and you know got better at our jobs. We started hand, handling some more, some more of the higher profile cases. Certainly not all of them. We were never there's always there's so many good prosecutors in that office. But you know, we were just at a stage in our career. Uh, we had been there. I'd been there a decade. Jeff had been there a little bit longer. Uh, there was going to be a change in the administration. You know, and we just had a conversation about um, we you know we had gone up against a lot of the. Uh, you know, sort of the roster of St. Louis talent on the uh, white collar front. And we just thought that, um, you know, there, it was, the work was interesting and we thought we could make an impact and, you know, stupidly we started our own firm. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you, well, I wouldn't say that. I mean, you guys, you guys had a good run and then you ended up uh, moving over to Hush Blackwell. And then I, you know, a year later came over. Um, what was that move like? And, and, you know, how would you, characterize that experience versus kind of having your own firm well i mean you know when you when you i think we it, we were lucky in the sense that we probably didn't think and how to think it think about it enough when we started our own firm um <laughs> i know i know but, what that's like yeah but we had we were lucky to have success largely because of our their the third partner in it bruce bartlett um but you know it, 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 I would say that, it, you know, it was wild, wild west at the time. You know, we knew what we were doing legally, but we had a lot to learn about how to operate a business. Mm -hmm. and like I said, uh, we got lucky in many ways. Of course, you always have to have good fortune, but we were able to have a successful firm. We partnered a lot with the Ashcroft Law Firm, the law firm of the former Attorney General John Ashcroft. And so we were able to, I think, you know, make a little bit of a splash in the market, uh, had some good cases, some good clients. I think we did some good work. Um, and then ultimately, you know, in the classic St. Louis story, never burn any, burn any bridges. And, you know, uh, my old Thompson Coburn, Coburn colleagues uh, many years ago, and I was with them, had switched firms to Hush Blackwell as part of kind of a, a lift out. And uh, there was an opportunity for... Uh, they had a group that did what basically what our firm did that was within their firm and that group left for another firm and they knocked on our door and said, we want to sort of buy your firm. And so that's how we got to Hush Blackwell. Yeah. And I find I, I was very fortunate, uh, about a year later, um, I was, you know, in DC at the time and you and I kind of knew each other a little bit and, uh, I was fortunate to, to get connected with you and, and to get to work with you for several years. So I, I always, uh, value that experience and all the, yeah. the mentorship. I mean, cert, you know, you take risks in your career and certainly one that I had some of the most exposure was the hiring of Mark Milton, but, uh, I guess it worked out for everyone. I would say so. I think it's been a good, I think it's been a good run. Um, certainly we had some, some good times. You've always, uh, you always indulge my early, early lunches. So I appreciate that. I still yeah. have, uh, I mean, trouble getting 30, people. 35 year old man and an 80 year old. You're, you act like an old man is what I'm trying to say. I said 30. Yeah. I like a good pair of pleated gabardines. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I think we need to bring them back. That's the problem. You know, we've got all this, uh, slim fitting stuff. It just doesn't work for a man of my stature. You're, you're always very, you're a man who enjoys lunch and you're, personal enjoyment of lunch makes it enjoyable to attend lunch with you. <laughs> well, I, pre I appreciate that for indulging me on all the 1130 AM, uh, lunches. So that's not, it's not easy to find people that will do that. Um, so I guess, you know, as a judge, yeah, you're obviously the listeners can tell, I mean, you're a very social, uh, you know, friendly person. Is it, is it lonely to kind of go from being an attorney who can, you know, kind of do, do what you want, have, you know, have, you know, socialize those kinds of things, then go into the, the federal bench where I feel like it has to be somewhat isolating. Is that fair? 
I think that's a fair statement, particularly during COVID, you know, as things have been much slower as far as in-person court interactions. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, it it is more, you have to be a little more cautious, especially around, you know, the attorneys and whatnot, because obviously it's your job to be fair and impartial for, you know, and give everyone uh, a fair shot at whatever their case is uh, or their controversy and, so you do you do have to be um, a little careful, but you know I've been lucky enough uh, to maintain some friendships, uh, you know, in the law and outside of the law, and you know you you do have to work a little harder because as you said, you know your office was next to mine, and you said let's go to lunch, and we went to lunch, or there were other folks down the hall, or maybe there was an event or a happy hour or a ball game, and you know certainly I feel like I'm a little bit more um, isolated for sure. Uh, but I think that's something I largely expected. And, you know, hopefully when the courthouse picks back up and, you know, we have t- attorneys rolling through here with their cases, uh, it'll, you know, mitigate that a little bit. Well, I imagine, you know, you get to know your other colleagues, the, the other judges, the staffs, and that kind of provides a sense of family or, or camaraderie. Um, Cause I mean, obviously there's an unbelievable roster of judges we have in the Eastern district of Missouri. So hopefully, uh, you know, you get to learn from them and, and, you know, commiserate, I guess, for lack of a better well, yeah. word at times was probably no, pretty, absolutely. pretty nice. They're, they're my colleagues now. And, um, you know, before I came on the bench, I had a tremendous amount of respect for all of the judges in our court. Um, and, you know, coming on here and seeing it from their perspective, it only enhances that sense of respect. I mean, we truly do uh, have a great bench here. Uh, You know, and I hope just to kind of uphold the standards of those that came before me. You know, I would say this, you know, St. Louis is a great town to practice law in. And it's for a lot of the reasons, you know, the the famous St. Louis question, where'd you go to high school or whatever, um, you know, it kind of reflects why it's a great place. I mean, it's big enough that it has really legitimate, high-level legal work and cases, um, but it's small enough to where uh, it sort of keeps some of the obnoxious behavior in check because you don't have, you don't get too many opportunities to, you know, sort of be a complete ass to someone else without it having reverberation. So it makes it a very uh, nice place to practice a lot of, uh, a lot of collegiality and a lot of, uh, you know, sort of uh, professionalism is what I've found since I've been in St. Louis. And I know, you know, Mark, you and I went a lot of other places, and that's, that's not always the case. I agree 100%. I and mean, I, when, when I was at the DOJ, in addition to Hush, I mean, we, we did interact and, and uh, deal with attorneys from other places. And um, I will say that I don't think I'd want to practice anywhere else besides St. Louis because it is a it, it's a double-edged sword, to your point. I mean, if you treat people wrong, it's it's people don't forget it. But at the same time, there are a lot of really good people and, and really good lawyers here and it's a, it's a great community. So, um, we really appreciate you being with us, um, here on the Mark Milton show. And, uh, certainly you are hopefully now a friend of the show and you're welcome, uh, welcome to join us anytime. Well, Hey, it's, it's, it's great to be on the show. I hope my, I don't cause a the tank in the ratings, but I guess the only time will tell. <laughs> no, no, I think it'll be, it'll be great. And, uh, we appreciate you being with us. Thank you. All right, Mark. See you soon, buddy. All Bye. right. Take care. That is the Honorable Matthew T. Shelp from the Eastern District of Missouri, United States District Court Judge, joining us here on the Mark Milton Show with the Smash, presented by STL Tax Lawyer and broadcasting from the Miller Furniture Studios. That's M-U-E-L-L-E-R Furniture Studios. You can check out Miller Furniture for all their current deals on anything you need for the house. And also, uh, you can check out all their great selection of American-made products. That's MillerFurniture.com. M-U-E-L-L-E-R furniture.com. This is the Mark Milton Show with the Smash. We'll be right back in a second.